So, here's another example for you guys. How do you find this one? Well, again, the same thing. The best thing I would do is rewrite this in the format that we know. Right? That's the form that we've been talking about transformations for all of our parent functions. We put in that form. So what I would do is I would rewrite this in that formation. Right? That's really a positive one. It's just being rewritten in front. So rewrite it in the back. Okay? Now we can talk about the transformations all day long, really, if we want to. Um, another way to look at this, rather than looking at like what the transformations are, is really just identify what I want you guys to actually see over here. Do you guys notice that the vertex is basically in the equation? Right? So you can understand the transformation like that works. But the vertex is really h comma k. That's all the vertex is. Right? Do you guys see it over there? It's just h comma k. So yes, knowing transformations is important, but we can even do this faster. So h in this case, notice how this is a positive. So my vertex in this problem is negative 2 comma 1. Because remember, if you're going to plug in negative 2 in here, you would have x minus a negative 2, which would be x plus h, or x plus 2. Does everybody see that? So you got to remember that h is going to be negative. Now, the other thing is we got to determine, is this a max or a min? So when the graph was opening up, we knew we have a minimum. If the graph opens down, like that one, we're going to have a maximum. If the graph is reflected about the x-axis, it opens down. Is this graph reflected about the x-axis? Yes. So this is a absolute max. Okay.